This lecture is on numerical differentiation. So we've looked at differentiation before when we looked at Taylor series in the first lecture. So the past couple of lectures was focused on integration. Now we're looking at differentiation. So in terms of differentiation, we've looked at the forward finite difference, backward finite difference, and centered finite difference. What we're going to do in this lecture is look at more accurate equations for these methods and uh, basically look at, you know, what's the second derivative, what's the third derivative, fourth, and fourth. I think that's it. After that, we'll look at basically the Romberg integration, but applied to differentiation. So the same equation that we just saw for the Romberg can also be used for differentiation. And then we're going to look at general scenarios where we have unequally spaced data. So if you have data points and they're not equally spaced. So whenever we're trying to find the derivative or integrate, we typically have kind of constant step sizes. But what if your data doesn't have a point at the step size that you want? So we're going to look at what to do in that case. And then we're going to look at, in general, what are the errors when I try to find the derivative or when I try to integrate for data points where the data points can have errors or not, and how does that look like? All right. So just like before, we saw the forward, backward, centered, and what we focused was on just the first term here. So what we're going to do in this lecture is try to find more accurate formulas by adding the derivatives that we see in the Taylor series. So how does that look like? If you look in on this slide, this is the general equation. The second derivative can be derived by using the same equation that we see here, but instead of using the function, we're using the derivative of the function. So for example, f of x i, right, this, this f prime x i, right? This is actually the same as what we see up here, this right here. Fxi plus one, right? The derivative at xi plus one would be what in this case? We said this is equal to this. So what's xi plus one then equal to? Right. So you have f of xi plus two minus f of xi plus one divided by h. So this is what you would plug in to here. And then this is what you would plug into here. You divide by h, so you get h squared. And then you basically, you know, combine the two terms and you get these, uh, that, these like, terms with coefficients that we see here. All right, so here I'm just kind of explaining the steps, but essentially we see in the slide, after that, what happens uh, when we combine the values, all right? So we're combining the values and we're inserting it back where? Back to here, right? So we found that what's the second derivative? using just points, right, without having to do any derivatives, and then plug it back into the main equation so that we could get a more accurate estimate of the first derivative. So this is what we're doing here. We, could, we plugged in the second derivative divided by two times h into this side. And you can see here the denominator is what two h squared, while here it's only h. So that means I have to multiply the top and bottom here by two before combining it with this term. And if I do that, I would get this. So negative f x i plus two, which is uh, the term that we see right here, plus four x i plus one, which is basically two times this, minus negative two times f x i plus one. That's why we get four. And then, you know, the three, the same thing with this. So it's, this is negative two fxi minus fxi, so you get three. So here, the order of the error is h squared. 
before it was basically just OH. It was probably on the previous slide. So what we're doing here is I'm presenting you how do we find more accurate equations, expressions for the first derivative, as we saw just now. And if I apply the same thing, I can do that also for the second derivative and get this more accurate term. So in general, in this course, you know, you don't need to derive anything. If you need it, I'm going to give it to you. So here we have the first order or first derivative, second derivative, third and fourth. And we have the equations. And what you notice is that as I increase the accuracy, I need more points. And all of these are forward finite difference. Why? Because we're always going forward. Like here, I'm xi, xi plus 1, xi plus 2. Here, xi, xy is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So you can see that in this one, we need five of them, right? Two, three, four, five, actually six terms, but xi plus 5. All right. We can do the same thing with the backward finite difference. Again, we know we take the second derivative right here using the backward, uh, the backward finite difference. We plug it in here, then we can get this expression. So I'm not going to do it again, but you get the point. All right. So then we have again another kind of chart showing first, second, third, and fourth derivative for the backward. In this case, you know, instead of going forward, all the points are going back from that point where I'm trying to solve for the derivative. Again, same thing for the centered finite difference. Uh, in this case, instead of h squared, I have h to the 4. So obviously much more accurate, but we need four points. All right. Again, this is the table for reference. And we'll go through a quick example here where we compare forward and backward uh, uh, finite differences. So here we have the equation. We want to find the derivative at x equals 0.5. The true value is negative 0.9125. So we're going to use a step size of 0.25. So when I'm going forward, right, I'm going to go two points forward, and I'm going to jump using the step size. So from 0.5, I go to 0.75, I go to 1. For the backward, I'm going 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and then 0. So I evaluate what's the forward and backward derivatives using the expressions with the order of h. These are only using basically two points, right? The point and the one forward, and then this one, the point and the point backward. And you can see the error is 26 and 21%. If I want to use the higher, kind of more accurate expressions, now we're using three points, right? So I'm using, you can see here, uh, this is the value at xi plus 2, this is the value at xi plus 1, and then this is the value at xi. I apply it, I get 5% or 6% uh, error. I do the backward, I get around 4%. Again, these two are, you know, one is not more accurate than the other, it just depends on the situation. Um, but basically, the, the error at, is at the same order. All right, so they're both a bit off, but not way off, okay? But I wouldn't say one is better than the other. Now what we could do in addition to this is, is use the centered method. But before we get into that, I want to also talk about the Romberg or Richardson extrapolation for the derivatives. You can see the same equations that we just saw for the integrals, okay? So the same thing, main thing you have to do is the h2, again, has to be half of h1 whenever I'm applying these equations. Um, and then you can do you know, 4 over 3 minus 1 over 3 and 16 and all that. Okay, so the same thing we can use. I'm not going to do an example with this, but I'm just letting you know that the same thing applies here. Now for the example where we want to use the centered difference, you can see here, you know, again, I have the same chart that I had before because we need points forward and points backwards. And in this case, we're doing two different uh, sizes. So h equals 0.5 and h equals 0.25. I 
Actually, in this example, I do apply the Richardson extrapolation, and we'll see that in a second. So the first derivative, using centered difference, with h equals 0.5, I get negative 1. Error, 9.6%. If I reduce the step size to 0.25, I get this value, error 2.4. And then if I apply you know, the Romberg for differentiation, 4 over 3, this value, which is the more accurate value, minus 1 over 3, the negative 1, I get the exact derivative. All right? Again, just applying equations, plugging in. Main thing to understand is how we set up these values. Okay? Always make sure, you know, you follow the step size and know when, like, at what value you need the function, the value of the function. So now we're going to talk about what if we have data points and not a model and not a function where the data points are not equally spaced out. So I can't easily find a step size where I can find all the points at the specific x value, right? Like, for example, my x values are 0, 1, 5. 6, 7, 20, right? What do I do in that case? Basically, we interpolate. Okay, so we covered Lagrange interpolation. We can use that, hit the data points, find whatever point you need in between that will allow you to apply the step size you want. All right? Another uh, area where this is also useful, if you have like uh, sensors running on different machines. Okay, one computer is collecting data every second. Another computer is collecting data every two seconds. How do I match the data, right? One is producing double the amount of data as the other. Again, apply interpolation, basically resample the data so that it's every second for both the computers and then combine the data and then use it, all right? And that could be your X on one computer and your Y in another computer. Okay? So that's another useful way of using uh, interpolation. All right. So here we see kind of the differentiation of data with no errors. And then here with some error. Mainly the point right here is the one that's a bit off. Okay? So that point doesn't follow this trend that we see here, slightly off. But when we differentiate using numerical methods, you can see how you know, way off your derivative is because of that slight error in one of the points. To avoid this, what you have to do is fit the data, okay? Not using a polynomial like Lagrange, but actually fitting it using curve fitting, okay? If I curve fit, uh, you know, I'll maybe get something like this, something more smooth, okay? You fit it and then you differentiate, then you would get a better, you know, derivative than what we see here. So that's one way of solving, you know, the issue of having errors in differentiation. But you can clearly see that if I'm trying to differentiate data, error is exaggerated. Okay, when I'm trying to find the integral on the other hand, it's not really exaggerated. Okay, because if I'm trying to find the integral, I'm trying to find the area below the graph, right? This area, this area, and I'm adding them. Every time I take a segment, I'm adding it. So what's happening is if I add this area, even though it has error, it's not going to look that bad. It's going to be more smooth than what we see here. All right, so that's the main difference when I'm integrating versus differentiating. All right, so here, this slide is basically talking about what I, whatever I said now about you know, curve fitting and then finding the derivative. That's what you have to do, okay? So this is a practice problem. So we have the same function that we saw in the previous kind of lecture. And the question here is to find the derivative at x equals 0 0.5. The true value is 1.283981, okay? 
But I'm asking you to use a centered finite difference to three decimal places, okay? And approximate using h or the step size of 0.5 and 0.5 divided by two, and then apply Richardson extrapolation to improve your estimate and evaluate the percent true or the true percent relative error. And for reference, you know, this is the first derivative using the centered finite difference. And this is Romberg differentiation.